All right, we're going to go ahead and get started now. And uh, hello, this is your host, Matt Brunquell, for today's webinar on the keys to converting Oracle Forms applications to Java. And conversion projects can be a low-cost, effective way to retain your investment in Oracle Forms applications, particularly in existing application business processes and logic. So this month's live webinar demonstrates the keys to migrating Oracle Forms applications to Java with a browser uh, front end. Now before we get started, I just want to review a few housekeeping items. Uh, for, for those of you new to Composer Technologies, we are a division of Dejus Inc., a publicly traded software company that's been in business for over 30 years. Uh, you might have known of us in the past as CypherSoft or Unify. Now we're known for being the first to deliver a relational database in the Unix environment, but since then we've delivered development software products that run across different databases and platforms really geared towards building and modernizing business applications and geared towards a business application developer who places a premium on productivity over low-level coding. Now we encourage questions on the webinar and the way you do that is to use the Q&A button on your WebEx toolbar. Now this is the button with the question mark. Um, there's also a chat button but it really makes it easier for Halid and George and I to look in uh, one panel for the questions to make sure we address all of them. Now I mentioned Halid Beg, who will be providing the demonstration portion today, and we'll also uh, have some assistance from uh, George Burlack as well. But Halid is our um, Director of Technical Services and, and Projects for Oracle Forms uh, Modernization, and he's been involved in both Oracle Forms upgrades as well as conversion projects to Java, and he also programmed in Forms himself. So it's just a great opportunity to have someone with his background and experience on Oracle Forms uh, demonstrating today. And so with that, we'll go ahead and review the agenda. So the objective for today's presentation is to provide you with the information on converting Oracle Forms applications into Java. And we'll start with an introduction that includes an overview of Composer technologies, and then we'll cover the key areas to consider when converting Oracle Forms to Java. Now we'll follow this with a demonstration so you can see how easy it can be to migrate and deploy an Oracle Forms application into a Java environment. And this will be followed by a Q&A session. So feel free to post questions throughout the briefing and the demo and we'll get to them during the Q&A session. So Composer Technologies uh, and its CypherSoft business is a part of Dages, who has over 30 years of experience in database development tools and migrations. Now the CypherSoft business in particular, which you'll be seeing today, has a very established and very successful practice for modernizing Oracle Forms applications. We're a member of the Oracle Modernization Alliance, or OMA, and for those of you that don't know, the OMA is an Oracle initiative to help customers modernize their legacy applications and infrastructure. And CypherSoft is a part of this, is really only focused on modernizing Oracle Forms applications. So we have the, uh, the conversion solution which we're showing to you today, as well as the ability to do uh, Oracle Forms upgrades as well. Now, we're going to talk about the challenges of a conversion project, or the keys, if you will. And a migrated application should be as intuitive for the original developers to maintain as it is for new developers who may have no experience in those technologies uh, used to write the original software. Practically speaking, this means that your solution should provide a one-to-one -one conversion in the code as much as this is possible. Now, the impact on the end users of the application need to be considered as well. So reproducing all of the functionality of the application is not enough. It needs to behave similarly over in the new environment in order to avoid retraining on the application. And for applications with large number of users, avoiding retraining can be a significant cost savings. Customers have also found that um, with this like-for-like, like, if you will, or similar uh, navigation for the end user, um, that they can also use the same scripts for testing the functionality from the Oracle Forms application. 
and uh, our customers find this approach a much lower risk. Um, uh, you know, this is what they tell us is basically by migrating a like for like first, and then looking at modernizing and extending the application longer term. Um, There's just a much uh, a much better approach, a much lower risk, or a way to kind of mitigate risk in the conversion project by getting it over into the new platform, the Java platform, uh, by minimizing the impact to the end users. Because when the, what they've told us, uh, the ones that have kind of gone down the rewriting route first, when the application's rewritten in the initial migration, and the users have to navigate differently. Um, successfully testing all of the functionality becomes very challenging. And it also makes resolving errors in the new application more difficult if you cannot compare it directly with the Oracle Forms application in a like-for-like -like manner. Now, there is some modernization that should be done as part of the conversion, um, and we do that, and we also work with our customers if they're looking for some guidance on what modernizations should they be considering for the initial migration piece. Now this graphic illustrates some of the keys to creating a path for the developers. You know, we talked a little bit about the end user perspective in the uh, last slide, but um, creating a path for the developers involved in the migration project, whether they're, they're the original forms developer or Java developers that are going to be maintaining it moving forward, um, in addition to producing clean Java code, Keeping the file structure of the components and the objects organized much as they were in Oracle Forms provides a reference point for both the original Forms developers as well as the new Java developers uh, that's much easier for them to follow. And in the case of the Oracle Forms developers, if they're going to be involved in the, in the migrated application, this also eases the learning curve into Java. And this is a key thing you'll see when we're in the demo, um, how the uh, the because we'll show you what the converted Java code looks like, but look at how the uh, project within the Java IDE, the way the folders are organized, it's much as how it was in the you know in if you were in the Oracle Forms development environment, and then how you'll be able to recognize component names and triggers and visual items um, from their names, much as they were in the Oracle Forms app. Now, as shown in the previous slide, Oracle Forms knowledge is rewarded by keeping a lot of those similar names uh, and, the, and the project hierarchy and so forth. And this helps reduce that learning curve for Oracle Forms programmers. However, this generated application, though, is 100% Java or Java EE. And um, in the generated architecture, the key concepts and fundamental principles of object-oriented programming can be easily identified. And you'll see that when we go through the demo. But you'll see known Java design patterns as well as classes, inheritance, uh, objects, packages, uh, method overloading, Java data types. I, I could go on and on, but you'll see that this is a pure Java app that follows the Java EE specs and that the application can be maintained and extended in most Java IDEs. I think um, our, our team uses JDeveloper primarily, but we have customers that use different Java IDE, IDEs in their projects. Uh, we see Eclipse a lot and Rational. Um, again, because it's a Java app, uh, it, it, it pretty much doesn't matter. Now, this illustration shows just a, kind of a few examples of the application business logic layer. Um, and we can go into the architecture in more detail during the demo if needed. And we also have a white paper available that uh, provides a technical overview of the architecture and the solution. Now, before we go into the demo, I just want to take a moment to review the, the conversion process. And this graphic illustrates the high-level steps in a conversion project with our solution. Now, the Cypressoft solution we're going to show you has been out for over 10 years, and initially we actually only delivered conversions as a service uh, when this first came out. But kind of, you know, as we gained experience on conversion projects and matured the conversion tool, uh, we were able to productize it. So there's documentation, there's training, 
Um, uh, so we offer both options. We still perform conversions as a service, but now uh, customers also have the option to license the tool and go through a four-day training course to be proficient and use it through a similar process as I have up here in this graphic. Now note that these bullets in each of these phases are just examples. Um, these deliverables can vary depending on the customer requirements and uh, in some cases they may not be necessary or there may be more deliverables. You know, a lot of that is established in that first step in the analysis and project planning. Um, it just all depends on the checkpoints and handoffs that are needed during a project. So at this point, we'll go ahead and demonstrate the conversion step in the migration project. And just some key points to keep in mind during our demonstration. We're going to convert the Oracle Summit application. And it's not as complex as some of your applications, but it has a lot of the components or characteristics that you'll see in your more complex apps. So it has menus. This has libraries, um, business logic, in addition to the, you know, the forms presentation layer. And, um, uh, this application, uh, we're going to do a full conversion. So uh, note, though, that you could choose just to do pieces of it, and I think Halid kind of highlights that. For example, you might just convert the PL SQL um, uh, business logic, or you know, once you convert it, uh, some customers find that the, what they want to do is uh, convert the presentation layer into a different option. Um, now we're going to show a like-for-like. Uh, conversion in a browser. So you'll see the Oracle Forms app will bring that up. Uh, so you see the Summit app that we're going to convert and we'll bring up the converted version of it as well in a browser. You'll see that like for like uh, just to, so we can illustrate some of the examples from those four key areas that we reviewed. But um, like I said, there is some modernization that can be done during the initial conversion. Uh, for example, there's, you know, Customer-defined templates can be used for those wanting a new look and feel for their converted applications and so forth. Um, and we can answer questions on that if needed. So with that, what I'm going to do is um, introduce Halid, and I actually need to unmute him and then turn control of this over to him so that we can see his desktop. And Halid, I just unmuted you. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. And then what I'll do now is change you to the role of presenter. So you can do your thing. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Khalid. And I will be showing the Summit application as a demo from start to end. So just bear with me for a second. I'm going to start this uh, process in a second. So first thing first, I will show you the Oracle forms running in Oracle uh, application um, uh, framework, basically. So, so a Summit application has three forms, one menu, and two libraries. So, so, so basically, when you run the uh, uh, forms application, you basically see that, as, as Matt mentioned, it's not a complex, complex application but it has most of the components you would be using in forms, applica uh, forms application development. For example, tree structure, master detail relationship, uh, tab canvases, stack canvases, uh, forms calling forms, uh, global variable passing uh, between the forms, uh, and things like that, like images and all those things. So most of the components are, are used in this uh, small application that we use as a prototype for conversion to Java. So the first app, the first form in Oracle side is obviously like it, it has a tree as a master, and then detail is this uh, on the top block is a detail of this master tree, and the bottom is uh, detail of the master, which is this uh, 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 data table uh, uh, canvas basically. So if you double click it, it will open order form, and order form has like image on, image off, and then uh, uh, this canvas here, like which is an MDI canvas and then uh, content canvas, and it goes further to the last one, which has the images and all those things. So that's basically like the three forms that we would be converting. So I'm going to start the conversion process or conversion tool. 
and if you all be able to see my conversion tool, you would see that is uh, the the interface, the main interface is not that complicated. We try to make it as simple as possible, so you can choose the option clearly what you want to do. And obviously, in the background, when we are doing conversion, there is a lot more things involved. Uh, when we are doing conversion, we are taking two passes. The first pass is to find out the business logic, which is included in program units. Or, or triggers of a form or in libraries and menus and all those things. So what we do, uh, we find those things and we convert the into Java classes. And we keep the naming convention same, the, the built-in name same, uh, the trigger name uh, as same, and I would show you later on when we would, we would be showing before and after converted code. The second thing what we are doing here is the second pass is to take the presentation layer, like your canvases, and then convert them into proper presentation layer. Either you go with a plugin, some uh, plugin application, or you go with ADF, like which is a thin client uh, um, application. So, so whichever you choose, you can select the presentation layer right here. During the conversion, you can choose either to convert the libraries, menus, or forms. And and there is no recommended path, like uh, uh, but we prefer to convert libraries first. Uh, because libraries are mainly used in menus or forms, and then we go to menus, and then we convert forms themselves. So that's the process. The third thing is obviously like the input folder, output folder, and the package name. Like this package name goes in the Java classes as the first line where it says package, and then you would be able to see like com, sports, co, summit as the application name. Um, character encoding, basically you can uh, convert any language code by providing the right character encoding, like from Hebrew to German to, uh, to French or anything like that. So you can do that. Input folder where all the forms and modules will be present. Output folder where everything will go after conversion. Last thing which I wanted to talk about is the database connection. We do not write anything on the database connection. We do not read anything from the database except for referencing. Because what happens in Oracle Forms, you can define a variable depending on a table column type, basically. So you can say ABC depends on uh, a table uh, with column employee number. So whatever the employee number it is defined as a number or a string, that variable will take that. So for Java data type, we have to go and find that variable type in the table. So that's where we are only referencing uh, some of the um, database dictionaries to find the type and go. We don't read the data. We don't read anything or write anything on the database. So next step, what I'm going to do is um, is a start conversion. The first thing, as I said, like uh, you can do forms conversion before library or menu. But my normal pro pro preferred path is to convert the libraries first. In this summit application, there are two libraries. So I'm going to select both libraries. There are very small libraries. So conversion should not take that much of time. On the conversion tool, you would be seeing um, a, a, a button on the left side with, at the bottom. Uh, it's called Analyzer. And, and and maybe I will let um, Matt talk about that later. What we do, analyzer, what analyzer tool is used for. Um, but uh, let me finish my conversion, finish my demo, and at the end maybe uh, Matt can make a note that he has to talk about analyzer, what analyzer do. So after each conversion process, you would see that there is a log file that appears on the screen, and most of the time uh, the conversion goes successful. Uh, and obviously in demo, obviously we have been doing this demo for some time, so, so uh, all the process or both libraries converted successfully. But this is the log file that we keep on a daily basis. Like for example, if you do some conversion today and you do some conversion tomorrow, the log file for today is kept for, uh, for, for, for due diligence or for audit trail or something like that. So after maybe a month or two months, you can go back to that log file and, and check what you had done at that time, what was the warning, what were the errors, or something like that. So these log files keep all those things. These log files also produce warnings and errors, for example. Like when, when there appears an error during the conversion, the conversion stops. But during the warning, it can continue, and then it will give you what it had found that you might have to look after later. For example, 
if you are using a go to statement we give a warning that okay we found a go to statement in this procedure or trigger and on this line and that go to statement has to be looked later on otherwise you might get a compiler in java or or something like that so these are these are the log files uh, uh, that that should be kept for 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 your audit trail or audit purposes the second step after the conversion of library is to convert the menu as if you notice like uh, and when i was converting library there was no presentation layer to choose from because library only con contains the pl sql logic or business logic so there was no presentation layer as soon as i select the menu conversion you would see that it, it it will give you the presentation layer option either you can go with java browser plugin or with oracle jsf adf since we are doing this demo for adf jsf so i selected that i selected the menu file and press the convert button again it's a small menu so it's converted fast so the last thing is is to convert the forms and again like there is a presentation layer i select the presentation layer select all the three forms put them on the right side for conversion and press the convert button once the conversion done it will again like give you all the all the processes if there is any warning errors or something like that everything seems to be running fine so once the conversion is done again like like you would not be having like three forms or two libraries and one menu in your application you might have like hundreds of forms so you might be converting like maybe few few hundred forms on a daily basis or you will convert everything on one day it depends upon how big the forms are how quick the conversion is being done but what you can do during during like initial stages or you can wait until the conver conversion finishes you can create a war file which is web archive file which is used for deployment purposes and we create a template for you and then you can use that template for later on to enhance your your conversion and obviously add more forms and or more modules in that in that template or you can create template again after conversion is being done so this is the last step basically during the conversion process which is to create the war file template and it asks what is your presentation layer i give my presentation layer what is your main form and 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 with my forms ex uh, experience i have seen 99% of the application has one form that is the driving form like for example that form might contain a menu that that calls other forms or the form itself has has a has a mechanism to call other forms from there onwards so there there is always one form that opens first that drives rest of the application in this case i'm i'm going to give customers as that form name because that's my driving do you want to compile the java code now or you want to compile it later so since there are only three forms and and we know the code compiles clean so we all, we 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 put we, we check this box up and and you can check the box up and if there is compile errors it won't create the java classes and you you can later on go in jdeveloper and set up your project and then compile the code there and see what warnings you were getting or what errors you got during java compilation but that's uh, that's the second so once you provide this information basically you you click the generate button and as you start creating the jar for a war file that we would be deploying in our once it is done it will give you this message here i close this one and for the purpose of this exercise i'm using tomcat as the application server to run this adf application uh you can use any application server which is java ee compliant for example uh websphere web logic uh oracle fusion middleware which is now web logic oracle application server or any anything that is compliant so my when my conversion is done everything is been uh, put in here so war file is right here i'm going to copy this war file from here i have a web app here which is empty i put it here on and paste it here i start my um, uh, tomcat so what it would do it will deploy that uh, uh, uh that uh, um, summit application so th this a message is express server mounted successfully means that the application is been deployed 
Once it is deployed, I'm going to open a browser because it's browser-based application. There must be a URL, which is the, this first one. So this is the same thing. Like in even in Oracle form, when you are starting, either you can write a batch file, or if you are on an application server 10G or 11G, you normally you can provide the username, password just to avoid or skip this login screen. The same you can do in Java. Either you can provide the login screen to the user, or you can skip by providing the username, password. So here in this one, I'm giving the username, password. Since there is only one database at this time that is taken as a default database, if there are several databases in your in environment, you, you have to provide which database it has to go and connect for running the application. So you can see here, I'm going to minimize everything and make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to open forms application right beside it. So this is a master detail. Again, like like the framework we have developed um, sort of runs the same way as Oracle form, basically. So it, it mimics Oracle form functionality. So for example, if you click this one, then th th there is a trigger that fires, which, which uh, retrieves the master and detail for, for the rest of the block if there is a relationship present in, in, in those blocks. And as, as I mentioned, there is a relationship present in this one. So for example, if you change here and you say, okay, sort on, on sales rep, it dynamically retrieve the records back and then sort on the sales rep. So if you click this one, it will display all these records. If you click this one, it will display all these records. And the same is here, like if you see at the bottom, this is a master. So if I change this one, it changes right here at the bottom. And these are like dynamic where clauses, like uh, where you can change the, you can sort the customer as a customer name, like with this one, or customer phone number. You can sort. So there is a when button press trigger that is changing the where clause and re-retrieving the records back with with the order by clause. On uh, on here there is a list of value which displays, and I don't know which record I'm, I'm, I'm working with, but I can press the list of value right here. And you can see when the list of value comes, the background color of the application goes gray. It means that you cannot do anything on the application until you are done with list of value, for example. So you can select any of the list of values. For example, it was 15, 12, and you say OK, and it will bring uh, 12 back. If I go back to customer, I can select the sports, I can select, I can double click here to bring the next form. And what next form is doing is passing the global variables and then executing a query on order form. So I can double click the same thing in here and it brings the next form here basically. Dynamically switching off and on the images right here. You can see there is no image, so it is not displaying. Um, if there is an image, it would display. The same thing you can do here, basically. The same help if you go with the content canvas. That's how the help works here. So look and feel, and, and even like the menus are right here. Like you can see the menus here. Like uh, there is a query menu. Enter query menu and all those things. Like how how does it work? So so what we have done uh, that you are giving an environment in Java with ADF functionality or presentation layer, doing the same thing what Oracle was doing before. That will give you um, uh, some uh, uh, some freedom of adding more functionality of Java or or, or utilizing Java to more extent basically. So that's what we do on the presentation. Look and feel is there. If you have defined any function keys, for example, if you have a, a key mapping file, uh, we also have a key mapping file in our, our, our framework that you can define the similar key mapping. So if you, you want to use F7 or F8 for enter query and execute query, you can use all those things. 
So this is basically the demo we, we normally show. So if exit out, it will show you, do you really want to uh, leave the form? And the same you can see here that do you really want to leave the form the same thing? Exit and it will go back to the customer form. So, so the next step after the demo of the application, I would show you how the code is translated basically. So, so before and after, how the structure is being built actually, and then we can go from there. So I'm gonna open Oracle Form Builder on my left side. And you can see in Oracle Forms, the name of the form is there. There are forms level triggers. There are uh, form level alerts data blocks, data blocks have items or data blocks can also have block level triggers. Then there are canvases and program units and all those things. So when I, I, I've already deployed this beforehand in Java developer and you can see that the structure right here, like uh, there is a, remember if you, if you remember in, in, in uh, sorry, if you remember in, 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 in conversion, we took we took this uh, package name, so com is going here, sportsco goes here, and then summit application goes here, right here. So the structure, whatever you provide the naming, you can change those names at the conversion time, and you can have your own naming convention for the for the structure of uh, of the Java code. So for example, like uh, uh, and under sportsco, you can see um, three more. Uh, subfolder like one is called libraries which has both the libraries which we converted menu has the menu and main menu has menu and then sub menus and all those things I'm gonna concentrate more on the form here and if you see here we converted three forms and I'm gonna take only customer form as the main form at the customer form now the structure is same, like there is a there is a customer, there is a customer, the same naming. These are the blocks. And now you would be thinking, where are the form level triggers and where alert goes? Basically at the level where you can see the customer form, there is a file called customer.java. And that file contains all the form level alerts and form level uh, uh, triggers. So if you see one of the alerts property like delete alert, for example, you can see that name of the alert, what is the style, it is caution, what's the button labels, yes and no. So if you want to change the button label, you can come right here and change it. What is the text, you can change. And you can also change the text of an alert dynamically by saying like uh, with a show alert property or not show alert property, set alert properties basically. You can dynamically change any of the button names or the text as you you can do in Oracle Forms. If you go further down, you would be seeing that the preform trigger, like this is a form level trigger. So preform trigger goes in this file. As 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 was mentioned before, that uh, the naming convention are kept uh, the same way. So for a guy like me who is moving toward Java from Oracle Form, can understand what these preforms are, what the what the um, uh, built-in names are and all those things. So it, 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 I know that preform would be fired before when new form instance, when new form instance would be fired, when new block instance, and all those things basically. So, so this is uh, this this is one of the code. It is this code only might have only one 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 statement which is called default, and it is set basically setting up a global variable customer ID with null value, and this is exactly what we are doing here. We are saying default value, setting the global customer ID as null value. And uh, and we do handle system variables, like where you can say, okay, uh, system cursor block, uh, system current block, what is the name of the block, uh, and then uh, what are the query modes, and all those things basically. The same we, we do handle global variables, and you can pass those global variables between the forms by calling one form to the another form. So these are basically all like uh, uh, when window close and all those things basically when, when, when new form instance, there's a one new form instance, one new form instance is calling a program unit called a refresh tree. So there is a refresh tree here, 
so I can go directly going to the declaration there is a refresh tree here a refresh tree is the one that we I was showing to you when when you refresh this tree that is the that is the that is the trigger uh, trigger that fires so going back to the to the other structure like the blocks if you see there are blocks like control block control block had items and each at each level you will see that there are um, block name dot java item name item name dot java these are the classes that we created they might be empty not doing anything but these are classes where you can put your own item level triggers or block level triggers because you might be firing the same name triggers at the item level and the same name trigger at the block level so item level will fire before the block level if you define something like that so map that's basically what i show and also if you want to talk quickly about analyzer then we can go to question and answer yeah well um we'll, we'll i can talk about the analyzer during the q and a we'll see what questions come up okay um, sounds there, good did you show anything on the presentation layer i didn't yeah i can show very quickly on presentation layer what, which is one of the thing like i yeah so, let's so let's you, just take a minute on that yeah so this is the like uh, an ADF. The the when we are doing conversion, we create these uh, JSS JSF F files that represent the canvases. For example, in 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 uh, in here you have a tab canvas right here that looks something like that. And one, as I mentioned, like when we are doing the conversion, we go through different passes, and one of the passes to take the canvases and convert them into right representation of JSF, JSF files and that those JSF files when deployed on under JDeveloper can be used as, as an editor so you can, you, can, you can use this as an editor basically you want, you want to do anything here you can, you can go and then uh, move this one make this one uh, bigger or all those things and you can also see the source code of this JSF file that is right here so that's actually where it is saying what this has been converted to. So there is a, a, a tab class, there are pixels, and the name of the item that is on, on, on there, and, and, and all those things. So you, can, you, can, you have a choice either you can, you can ch make the changes on the design side or the source side, basically. So it's like HTML developer, basically. If you are designing a web uh, page or web application, you have a, if you are using an application that is like, uh, for example, Dreamweaver or something like that, you have a choice either you, des you use the designer part or you can use the HTML part if you are good with HTML or you can use the combination. The same you can do with, the, with this editor and JSF. So I think that's uh, what I wanted to define and then uh, we can go from here. Great, great, okay. So I'm, what I'm going to do is just switch, switch back over. Here, and what we're going to do now is open it up for questions. As I mentioned, uh, use the um, the the Q and A uh, panel or the the on your WebEx toolbar the button with the question mark to post your questions. We'll go um, silent for a second. Uh, just to um, start uh, collating all the questions, and then in about a minute we'll uh, come back on and, and start going over them. All right, our first question is, what version of Oracle Forms do you support? 
and um, uh, Halid, I'll, I'll let you, I'll answer first, but you, you probably will want to add on to it. But we, um, we've we seen conversions that the sweet spot we see the most of is Oracle Form 6i uh, for converting. But we've had folks that have converted from Oracle Forms 10. Um, I We've done some from 4.5. Uh, we've even had some folks as far back as uh, Oracle Forms um, 3, although there you there's kind of an interim step. It does need to get uh, that, you know, as a character base, it gets converted or upgraded first up to 6i in order to run it through the conversion tool. Is that is there anything to add on to that, Halid? No, I think yeah, you're right. Like uh, we, we, okay. we do from uh, uh, 3 to all the way to 11g now, so. Okay. Next question. Was the uh, presented Java conversion manually manipulated, or was that the pure output from the converter? Like, should are you going to say, or should I say? Yeah, go ahead, Halid. No, I'll let you answer that one. Go ahead. So, so yes, a little bit like what we use here is CSS files. So, uh, for for summit application, we have created the CSS file that is producing the result like that. But uh, but there is a default CSS file. So when we do a a client conversion or client convert their own application, they can use the default CSS file, which has some coloring scheme and then fonts and sizes and all those things. And then uh, then then what they can do is they can change that CSS file to produce the results as they want. So in this case, when we were doing conversion, we did some manual changes on CSS file, and and most of the most of the uh, like uh, the X and Y positions or or the presentation that the where item should be appearing was, was part of the conversion tool. So, right. and the business so when we are doing conversion, we convert that and then we change the CSS file so we can have the right coloring and and background color of the canvas and items and all those things basically. And the business logic output that you reviewed, though, is pretty much exactly what the the tool yes. outputted, right? Yes, yes. The business logic side was 100% converted code. Great. Okay. Uh, next question: um, What version of Java or JDK is supported? I'll let, so, go ahead, Halid. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you want to, you go ahead. Ben. That's not a problem. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Matt, if you want to. Okay. So um, uh, we support JDK 1.6 with the current release. Uh, we do have customers that are on JDK 1.5, and I, I believe we even have some on 1.4. That's true. That's true. Like uh, we support as uh, back as 1.4 and as current as 1.6 at this time. Great. Next question. Uh, here's the analyzer thing. Thank you. Uh, Halid mentioned the analyzer. Can you tell us more about that? So, uh, what the analyzer? In fact, here. Let me go back to a slide. I think that'll help illustrate that this conversion process. And you'll see that first step in the illustration talks about analysis and project planning. And the, and the first bullet is the analyzer results. So one of the, the utilities, if you will, in the conversion tool is something we call the analyzer. Um, and as I had mentioned, you know, this solution's been out for over 10 years. And originally, we just did these as uh, conversions as a service. So we created this analyzer to basically run your forms, menus, and libraries through, you know, all those related objects to tell us um, exactly what the effort would be to do the conversion. Um, we would use that uh, to estimate, you know, what the effort is going to be in the project. And what the analyzer does is it will actually identify anything in the Oracle Forms app that the composer CypherSoft tool is not going to convert automatically. And there's some, usually the questions that come up from that is, well, give me some examples of that. And 
basically uh, the types of things that it flags for um, uh, not to convert automatically. In some cases, it's uh, there's some Oracle commands that we either A, haven't run into before, or B, we've run into them in other projects, but it's you know it only shows up once in that project. And so it makes sense to just do that manually um, after the automated conversion. But you know if the analyzer uh, identifies it and it shows up a hundred times in the project, we're like, oh, you know, it's time to automate that that command. Um, in other cases, there are things that it won't convert automatically because when you go to a Java architecture, there are some things you should make some decisions on, and you shouldn't convert automatically. For example, uh, you might have go-to statements that were used by your programmer on the Oracle Forms app, um, and uh, there's not necessarily a one-to-one -one conversion of that in Java. In some cases, you know, it was used for error handling, in which case you want to replace that with try-catch statements um, on the Java side. Uh, in other cases, it's um, those go-tos can be replaced on the Oracle form side before the conversion uh, so that it, you know, now more of the app will be automatically converted. So it just identifies those types of things um, uh, and typically what we see in most projects is those types of things that aren't automatically converted take anywhere from one to two weeks on average to address um, after the conversion. Now, again, for some very large projects, it could be a little bit more than that, but most of the projects that we do that I would say are on the average side, it's usually one to two weeks of effort, because that's the other question we get is, well, how much work is going to be involved, you know, in things that don't get converted automatically? You know, and the other thing in the process, since I'm talking about that, really, this automated conversion converts most of the Oracle Forms uh, application itself, where most of the time is spent after that automatic conversion is in the testing of the um, converted app. So, uh, you know, that's something that you still have to do. But again, when you do a like-for-like, like, um, that, that testing gets much more streamlined when you can use the same testing scripts and you know <clears throat> what results to expect. Um, it becomes a, a much lower risk um, project. Anything, Halid, that we should add to that? No, you you are you are on on point actually. Like you have defined analyzer, so yeah, that I think is good enough for this definition. Okay, good. All right, any other questions? Ah, here's one. Can we get a copy of the presentation? Uh, there was one gentleman, he said that he can't continue um, and uh, because uh, he couldn't phone in because he was <laughs> he's from South Africa. Uh, so um, I'll, uh, I'll make sure our rep for South Africa follows up with him, but just so everybody else knows, yes, you can get a copy of this. We uh, will have a recorded version of this available, and that will be available within the next day or two, certainly before the end of the week. And um, you can get that from your uh, Composer Technologies representative. You also will be able to find it on our website, which I have up here now on the composertechnologies.com. Uh, and you, have, you can actually view it um, on the website, uh, or um, it also provides a, the uh, link for it on YouTube. So we have a YouTube channel. Um, in where we have a host of recorded uh, webinars available. Any other questions? It looks like there's no other questions, so we'll, we'll uh, wrap this up, although it's not too late to post one if you need to. Um, First of all, Halid and I want to thank you for participating. We hope you found this uh, um, useful. Um, let us know when you exit out of the webinar, you'll get a little like three question survey that pops up. Uh, let us know what you thought. Um, was it what you were expecting to see? Uh, are there particular questions or things that didn't get addressed? 
And then if you um, have requests for future topics to cover, we do these webinars about every other month. Um, and then on the off months, we actually do a newsletter where we cover topics on Oracle Forms uh, modernization and conversion. So if there are particular things that you would like to see or want more information on, let us know there. And I'm sure um, uh, a Composer Technologies rep will be following up with you to see what you thought. Um, if there's any interest, we do have, uh, we have white papers. Um, we do sample code conversions. If you need to see some of your own code uh, converted, and we have details on how that program works. And uh, again, we, uh, we thank you for your interest. Thank you very much, everyone.